Hello, in this video, amazing fight between Hans Niemann, 19 years old, 2688, and Sam Savian, 21 years old, 2684. Amazing at the US Championship in St. Louis, classical chess over the board. And what I want to point out that uh, this is the third win in a row in this tournament, round 10 against Murad Jabari, round 11, who win for Neiman against Lenderman. And he's on fire because Sam Sivian, 2688, a very strong young grandmaster. So how did that happen? Absolutely amazing game, but I'm going to give you the skinny, uh, which means really what was of note in this game. That's kind of the critical position, but how did that fight happen? First, Queen's Gambit. That variation is called the semi tarash this is a well-known end game and here typically you would have take take bishop g5 with some ideas but in the game a3 played to prevent bishop b4 so far so good let's continue and in this moment we're on move 14 why to play on move 15 what happened g4 Excellent move, trying to break and attack e4. Now, Niemann play f4, and now we start to go in a crazy, crazy uh, line. Now, there was some crazy move, like here, the bishop is attacked. Knight e2, protecting d4, comes to mind. But instead, rook d1 played. Well, did the grandmaster with white, you know, uh, um, a blundered a rook? Not so fast, because that bishop here came to d1. Doesn't control e6. So now we got a check. And now, taking here. Everything is, you know, that bishop here is under attack. And the game went on. Now, I want to bring to the key moment here. We will move 41 after time control. This is black to play. So what is the idea here for white? White is down an exchange, okay? But if you take on h7... Then move the rook, somehow that h-pawn can promote. So very important, trying to win that um, pawn and trying to promote. What is black counterplay? Black counterplay would be at some point, you're going to try to win that bishop, you know, sack back the rook, then take the pawn. Now you're going to take the pawn on b2 and race that b-pawn. Therefore here, excellent move before to start with. Now the game continues. Now we're in a rook and game. F4 played, F5. So that's a race. That pawn is trying to promote. This one is trying to promote. Who is first? Black has the edge. Rook G2. Now obviously I want to take here, attacking the rook, and here big blunder h3 and white is lost so here there was only one move to save the game and the move was rook h5 now you have two ideas let me just show what would be the normal move for black to win king a2 trying to promote right so now a6 amazing move b2 now you give a check right if the king goes there you're gonna try to push this pawn somehow, right? And try to attack. So instead, you can try to do king b3. But then you do check. You keep giving check. And if the king comes back, rook b5. And you are uh, again in control. So you can see that king a2, a6 saves the day, right? So that's pretty amazing stuff. Pretty amazing stuff. So instead, on rook h5, black had to try rook f2, right? And then, this is a race. Clearly, black trying to promote. The black is promoting, but white is promoting. And now it's a race to go by the a pawns. And now, this is a draw, right? Because you're going to go here and there's no way black can win. 
So that's a row. So here, amazing rook h5 was the right move. But instead, h3 is played, defending h2. That's a mistake. Now, king a2. So what's the difference? We have a race. But now, rook take f7. That's the difference. Now, if we take here, we make a queen, right? So on rook to f7, if you do, let's say, rook b5, you queen. And if you try to advance, let me show you the win. You take, and now you do a6, take here, and you promote. So that was such an amazing game, and that was very close, but in this position, h3 is losing, rook h5 is drawing. An amazing uh, game, lots of tactics in these crazy imbalanced positions, but Hans Niemann showed uh, he really can play at a high level, and he is coming back. What a comeback by the young gunmasters showing what he can do in classical chess. There was 30 minutes delay, a lot of high security, so we can say we have a youngster, if you will, a 19-year-old, a teenager, really, really, really uh, bursting into the chess scene. So we are not done talking about Hans Niemann as a, a promising GM in the US. I hope you enjoyed this recap and I'll see you in the next one.